would it be smart to have a better mix? You just were going through some of the, the options in, in Canada's mix there. When you look at the timing factor, don't we need to have a long-term plan? Do you think nuclear could run alongside renewable, renewables in the longer term? I mean, the emissions crisis isn't going to magically disappear over that longer-term period. I have no problem evaluating all technologies, but what we need is a government showing a plan that actually makes sense this decade. The idea that we're going to wait 25 years before the LMP's nuclear fleet is operational is just ludicrous. How do we get through the next 5, 10, 15 years while we wait? Because it's not about nuclear versus renewables, as you said. It's about deploying sensible economic energy and climate policy for Australia this decade not in 2045, 2050. That's what I find ludicrous. This is all about extending climate wars. It's all about scaring off the investors who are absolutely keen to deploy a quarter of a trillion dollars of capital in Australia because AEMO has, has 260 gigawatts of firm renewable investor proposals in the investor queue today. Not one nuclear power plant, not one gas-fired power plant, not one coal-fired power plant, 260 gigawatts of batteries, wind and solar are investors' priorities. That's what's in the investor queue in front of EMO today. So why is the LMP proposing a communist-style, all-of-government-funded strategy when private markets are saying we're all in on the low-cost, fast-to-deploy commercially viable technology solutions required today. Tim, when it comes to looking at the Paris Agreement targets, looking at the 2030 targets that we know the coalition uh, has recently dumped as well, how confident are you that under the current plan we can actually reach those targets? Because, as you know, there are plenty of doubters saying that it's just not realistic that we're going to get there. We have to get there. The climate scientists of 40 years ago, Exxon's own climate scientists 45 years ago, predicted exactly what has happened. If anything, they were conservative. And so we have a global climate crisis. What I know is that China is building 24 gigawatts of wind and solar every single month right now. I've just come back this morning from uh, two weeks in China visiting 10 of the world's largest clean tech investing facilities in the world. It is staggering the scale of the technology and research and development that China is investing in today. And even I'm, I'm fine with nuclear in countries that have the expertise to deploy it. China does, but China is building about one new nuclear power plant every year at the moment, one gigawatt. They're building 220 gigawatts of solar every year at the moment. They're building 80 gigawatts of wind. So when we look at what China's doing, and China has all of the expertise, it is a command and control economy that is happy to subsidise nuclear, but for every nuclear power plant, they're building 300 wind and solar power plants. So nuclear in China is 4.6% of total generation. Renewable energy is... 30% of total generation. So even a country like China, who's the world's biggest builder of nuclear power plants, and unlike Canada, they've built nuclear power plants every year for the last 30 years. Canada hasn't built a single one. And Ted O'Brien, you might want to ask Ted O'Brien, how many nuclear power plants has Canada built in the last 30 years? The answer is zero. And so he's citing a power plant that was approved in Ontario in 1977. I want to talk about what is commercially viable in 2024. What's going to be commercially viable in the next decade? We know the price of batteries has just dropped 50% this year. We know the price of solar modules has dropped 50% this year. So when Ted O'Brien's quoting power plants built 50 years ago in Canada, I'd rather cite what China and world-leading countries like America and Europe and India are building today in 2024.